Hi guys, yes, it is an outdoorsy weekly update. Uh, if you can't see the video and you just listen to the podcast, I am sat on a beach in front of jet ski near the water with a nice blue sky and uh, yeah, just a nice sort of sunny Gold Coast day. I decided to come out and sort of see something different because I just, frankly, I've been inside the whole week. We actually had bad weather for a couple of days, which is really unusual here. And I've got to go away to Sydney and Melbourne during the week as well. So it's a short trip, but I'm going to be away from the really nice sunshine here and at least somewhere else in Australia. So that's not too bad. But look, there is a bunch of stuff that's been happening. I'm hoping that the, the lapping water in the background is not distracting or not too soothing. And you can still hear me. Because I do want to talk about a few things. And, you know, one of the things is when I did my weekly update last week, I'd, uh, I mentioned that I was going to load some new data into Have I Been Pwned. I'd just done Reverb Nation and there are other things coming. Uh, and of course, as, as many of you will now know, those other things included B, which was 9 million records, uh, and also Kickstarter, which from memory was about 5 point something million records. And they were, I guess, sort of interesting breaches insofar as we knew years ago that something had happened, that, that they'd had an incident, they had disclosures. Uh, but we didn't see them until literally until Friday. So they were both incidents that dated back to 2014. They were part of the same stash of data that came from someone who passed on the Reverb Nation data. And I mentioned that you know there are going to be several of them, uh, and a couple were known, which was Bitlink Kickstarter. The one that was not known, which was uh, quite a biggie, 17 million records, was Discuss. Now. I was in Discuss, I was also in Bitly as well. I know a lot of people who ping me on Twitter were not just in those two, but they were in things like Kickstarter as well. Obviously, sort of pretty mainstream, well-known services. So we, uh, we being many of you and myself, appeared in many different incidents last week. Now, Kickstarter, or rather uh, Discuss, was especially interesting uh, for a few reasons. Now, one of the reasons was is that they did not know that they had had an incident. And I have nothing to suggest that they had any sort of inkling at the time and didn't disclose it. I got in touch with them on uh, Friday morning my time, which was before I did my last weekly update. So I think I, I think I sort of said something like, you know, I've got a, a kind of a difficult discussion to have today. So uh, I, I spoke to those guys, obviously got them the data which had allegedly come from their system. They were able to verify it really, really quickly. And, and this sort of leads into the first thing I wrote this week which was about uh, how Discuss demonstrated the right way to handle responsible disclosure. Or, or rather, we'll, we'll rephrase that, because it was me doing the disclosure then. The right way to handle breach disclosure for the people impacted. So I got in touch with them, I forget the exact times, but it was like early Friday morning my time. Uh, we jumped on the phone after I'd sent them some data as well. Uh, that there really wasn't a lot that I could tell them other than, look, this came from the same person who sent me a bunch of other data, which was very legit. And, you know, this sort of was late in the day of their time in, in, on the West Coast in the US. And they sort of went away overnight, prepared, obviously, statements, figured out what to do, locked accounts which had passwords in them. I think it was around about 20% of accounts had SHA-1 hashed passwords. Uh, the remainder people were using social logins. So uh, when a social login was used, there wasn't a password present because of course you're logging into Google or whatever it is instead. So they kind of protected the accounts they needed to, got in touch with people. I've seen messages even today from people uh, still getting notifications. I, I suspect what they've done is gone, okay, here's like the 20% with passwords, we'll let them know now and then we'll, we'll kind of drip feed the rest of them. Uh, but the, I guess the, the bottom line and the figure that really stood out for me is that within 24 hours, and they just scraped in, it was like three hours and 43 minutes or something. Within 24 hours of me first contacting them, they managed to get the data, verify it, go through and protect accounts, figure out their strategy around how they're gonna communicate and everything, and get a message out publicly. So less than 24 hours from everything is fine in the world of Discuss through to a public notice. And that is just an awesome result. And I really wanted to highlight the fact that they had done a really good job because I am one of the first people to criticize when organizations do a really bad security thing. And let's face it, some of them deserve a lot of criticism. The news from Equifax is still coming out. The day the news was their website was accidentally serving malware 
Not a good look at the best of times, let alone after all the stuff they've been through lately. So Discuss got that message out. The other thing that Discuss managed to do very, very early on is talk to the media. Uh, and they spoke to Zach Whitaker at Zinet, and I, I sort of suggested to them at the time, this is a good thing to do. You can represent your version of events. And, and what I really mean by that, it's not to put a spin on it, but it's to explain all the facts as they're known rather than having a headline somewhere which makes a few assumptions and then people start to draw conclusions. So what I liked about Discuss is they really sort of controlled the messaging from day one onwards, you know, from sort of zero hour onwards. So look, it was a bad day for them. It's not fun having your things hacked, particularly when it's 17 million records, but they did the right thing. Now, I want to come back to Discuss in a moment, but just one other thing, there are three other breaches in that massive set, which included Discuss and Bitly and Kickstarter and Reverb Nation. Those three, I'm presently still going through the disclosure process on. I have loaded a couple of other things between last week uh, and now. None of them were part of that stash. Uh, I am working with a reporter on disclosing these, uh, a couple of reporters actually on different incidents. Progress is, let's just put it slow. <laughs> we'll see how it pans out over the next few days. Sometime, uh, probably early next week, I suspect, we will see a, a total of, let me see how many was left, I think a total of about 20 million records still to go uh, across three separate incidents, which is pretty serious stuff. Now also, between that period of last week's update and this one, I also loaded Victory Phones data. Now, on the one hand, this wasn't really significant. There are 166,000 unique email addresses. On the other hand, it came out of 213 gigabytes of data, and that actually is rather significant. And the reason they had 213 gigabytes of data is they had an exposed MongoDB, no password, they got owned in the same way as so many other organizations, including Cloud Pets, got owned, in that someone found that DB, and the people were often finding it by the likes of, of Shodan, sucked all the data out, redistributed it, eventually it landed in the inbox, and here we are. So getting back to Discuss for a moment. Now, the, the thing about Discuss is that they said data related back to 2012. So basically, it's a snapshot of data in 2012. And this kind of got me thinking and, and led to the next thing that I've written but not yet published, and I'll explain why in a moment. It, it got me thinking about the fact that your design helicopters. So just sort of over here on the other side of the island is a, is a sort of a touristy center. We've got SeaWorld and things like that, and they have helicopter rides and that kind of thing. So every now and then you get buzzed by helicopters. Anywho, so um, getting back to uh, Discuss and the, the, the sort of 2012 nature of things, the piece I wrote today, and I wrote it for my uh, Windows IT Pro Security Sense uh, column. I haven't been able to publish it yet. Come back to that. The piece I was writing was that I had a number of people reach out to me after I wrote about Discuss. And they said, ah, Discuss use SHA-1. Like, SHA-1 is shit, you know? Like, you should never be using SHA-1 for, for passwords. And, and they're right. Like, you should not be using SHA-1 to store your passwords. Not salted SHA-1, not SHA-256, not SHA-512. None of the SHA things as a single iteration of a hash. It's way too fast. Bad news. And so they were right. You know, you shouldn't be using it. But I was sort of having to say to him, just, like, just for a moment, keep in mind that this data does relate back to an incident in 2012, or certainly a 2012 snapshot of data. So as much as we might look at this and say, today in 2017, you should not be using SHA-1, back in 2012, it was a much more acceptable solution. Did I say 20, 2001? 2012, you know what I mean. <laughs> so back in 2012, Using SHA-1 was way, way, way more common and way more, I guess, accepted by the development and security communities. Now, having said that, even back then, in the middle of 2012, I wrote a blog post called Our Password Hashing uh, Has No Clothes. If you saw Troy Hunt No Clothes, I know this is appropriate given where I am. Uh, trust me, it'll be fine. You'll find the blog post. So even back then, we were saying, this is not a good algorithm to use. The thing is, though, is that 2012 is when a snapshot of their data uh, was taken. They would have made that design decision many years earlier. 
And based on their disclosure, I suspect they made the design decision around 2007. So now you've got to go a decade ago, a tech company made a decision about how to store passwords. And Moore's law has taken effect, you know, sort of five times since then. It's that two to the power of five, or, or rather power of two, so you're like 25 times more processing power. Uh, and and the, I guess the point is, is that the era in which the decision was made is very different to the era today. Now, in part, that's to kind of defend Discuss's decision for choosing Sharp and go, all right, I can, I can see how you would have done that in 2007. And in part, it, I guess it's also an observation that we've seen so many data breaches, especially last year. So think about MySpace, LinkedIn, uh, Dropbox, Tumblr, uh, geez, what else? Last F All of these incidents, they happened back in 20, 2012 in many cases or earlier. I think MySpace actually goes back to your it around 2008, a little bit later. But we saw the data appear in 2016. So we're judging them by 2016 or in the case discussed 2017 standards, but the decisions were made in a, in a simpler time. So that the point is to, to sort of remind everyone that these incidents are snapshots from a bygone era. So uh, that's the Windows IT piece. I went to publish that before I came out here on uh, Jetski. They've redesigned their website. I can't find the link I use anymore to go through and like clone an old one and make it into a new one. And I'm sitting there going, I can try and find the link, or I can go jet skiing, and well, anyway, here we are. <laughs> so I may not actually be able to get that out until next week when someone uh, from Penton Media, the company that runs Windows IT Pro, tells me where my link went. All right, so that's that. Uh, in other news, my sponsor this week is Turbium Labs. So Turbium have been there many times before and they are a, a real sponsor whose support I appreciate very greatly. The sponsorship thing's still going great. I've signed up a couple of sponsors just in the last week that do very, very different things. Uh, and when I say signed up as well, this is people that reach out and go, hey, about that sponsorship thing. I still have never gone out and sort of advertised sponsorship for want of a better term. It just comes up organically. So you'll see a couple, they're going to be sort of next month uh, kind of time frame, that, uh, that do things very different to everyone who's seen before in ways that I think is actually pretty cool. So, you know, see what you think. Uh, now I'm booked out uh, until around about the middle of December as well, which is really great. So I've got a few ideas about what to do over the Christmas period when it's a little bit slower. Uh, but until then, lots of, uh, lots of booked time for sponsorship, which is absolutely awesome. So look, that's it for today. I hope that the audio has come out okay. I can't even see myself in the video, to be honest, because it's so freaking bright here. So I think I'm going to sign up from this and actually go and get in the water because I'm, I'm sitting on dark sand, which has absorbed the heat throughout the day, and I really need to go and cool off. Thanks very much for watching. I hope this one worked out okay and it was something a little bit different. Uh, I will be back home again next week. I've got to go to Sydney and Melbourne, as I mentioned, but I'll be home on Thursday night. So back in for the Friday update. Thanks for watching, guys.